We got word just a short time ago that the Supreme Court has already found the first of the defendants guilty on five charges and sentenced him to 17 years in prison. And joining me now to talk about the significance of these events is Brian Winter. He's the editor-in-chief of America's Quarterly. Brian, thank you so much for being with us. I mean, it's not just about the people who sort of smashed into government buildings and, and, and broke things and, and stormed government buildings in Brazil. It's also about the financial backers, the people who were in charge of organizing this particular insurrection. Where are we on that? Well, I think the Brazilian Supreme Court and the Brazilian political class at large is trying to very clearly send this message never again. Um, trying to show uh, with these quick trials against these people who participated um, that if you go into government buildings, multiple government buildings, do something that in some ways was even worse than what happened in the January 6, uh, 2021 riots in the United States, just because of the scale, that this won't be tolerated, it will be punished. And now, as you know, the quest is on to find not just the people who went into the buildings, but the people who paid for them to be there. Those investigations can continue, it hasn't advanced uh, quite as much as these other trials have so far. I mean, let's think about what was going on that day. Bolsonaro himself, you know, after losing the election, was in the United States. He wasn't in Brazil at the time. Um, but what about the top man himself? Because there have been investigations as to whether or not Jair Bolsonaro was possibly involved um, in this particular insurrection. What more do we know on that front? So there's no public evidence that uh, former President Bolsonaro was personally directing this, uh, and therefore these trials have not yet touched on him directly. But Bolsonaro has other legal issues, and he has already been forbidden um, by the courts from running in the next presidential election set for 2026 for spreading um, fake news about Brazil's electronic voting system in 2022. So at least in theory, if that holds, he's out. He may also face prison time for this um, scandal in which he allegedly ordered aides uh, to sell jewelry that had been gifted to him by the Saudi Arabian government. So he has some other legal issues um, that he's gonna be dealing with, I think, for the next months and years. I mean, I find that so interesting because, you know, we talk about the sort of superficial comparisons between January 6th and January 8th in Brazil. But when you think about the fact that because Jail Bolsonaro intimated this idea that the voting systems were rigged, that you couldn't trust the voting systems, that he's now been barred from running in the next election, that is very different from what's happening here in the United States. I do want to talk about the division, the level of division in Brazil, because even just I remember talking about this on air leading up to the election, there was just so much division between the supporters of Lula and, of course, the supporters of Bolsonaro, not to mention that division was worsened by Bolsonaro's rhetoric itself. Um, where are we on how divided the country still is? So believe it or not, things have gotten a little better. Um, I think in part because a lot of Brazilians are just tired of politics. They're tired of the division. When I was last there uh, in August, so very recently, um, there was, the, the feeling had definitely changed. And, and people who I spoke to in politics and business uh, and everyday people confirmed this. And I think it's, it's there's, a couple reasons. One of them is these corruption scandals involving Bolsonaro have really left the conservative movement, his supporters, um, shocked. And in some ways, I think there's a level of, um, they're just very disappointed in Bolsonaro because even if you don't buy into the allegations that he spread fake news about the election, um, these allegations about him essentially trying to hawk uh, these, this jewelry that didn't belong to him and pocket mm -hmm. the money. It's very embarrassing. The other thing that's happened, you know, there's nothing like an economic turnaround and Brazil's economy might grow 3% this year. Um, and that would be uh, that would be a good number for them. It's a country that has been stagnant, economically speaking, for about 10 years now. And so 3% growth feels pretty good, motivated in part by a good harvest. And so, yeah, I, I just didn't see the same polarization and the same degree of mobilization. And I, I think these trials have played a role um, by reminding people very quickly. Uh, you know, they didn't wait long. They did this, you know, with, with considerable, some say abnormal, speed. And I think society has been watching and, and maybe that's convinced people that they should turn to something else.
And one of the things I, I thought was just fascinating and, and quite sad really about what happened on January 8th was that it, it was a wake up call because, you know, we saw a number of coups in Brazil in the 20th century. But it was it really had this re reputation of just being a stable democracy and a place the last place, I think, in Latin America where you would expect something like this, an attempted insurrection. But obviously they were inspired by what happened in, in the United States. Uh, Brian Winter, we have to leave it there. Uh, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Still to come.